In this video, we'll take a look at what the most common causes for Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy is, what it feels like when you have it. So what are the typical symptoms and how does it react throughout the day? And then lastly, also, what's the best way to diagnose it? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from TreatMyAchilles.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your Achilles injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to our website. It's always useful to just quickly look at where the Achilles tendon is in the body and how it functions when we move, because that will help you understand the cause of your Achilles tendonitis. So Achilles tendon attaches your calf muscles to your heel bone. So you've got your gastrocnemius muscle and your soleus muscle, which is lower down in the calf, that then terminate into the Achilles tendon and the Achilles tendon then attaches it to the heel bone. Now, they work as a unit, so it's not possible to train your calf muscles without affecting your Achilles tendon and vice versa. The Achilles tendon works whenever you propel yourself forward. So that includes walking, running, jumping, changing direction, going upstairs, anything where you've actually got to move and push up on your or off, off of your toes. Now, depending on the type of activity, the amount of force that goes through the Achilles tendon also changes. And if you read the research, depending on the um, research study and how fast participants were running, when you run, forces of between six to even 12 times your body weight can go through your Achilles tendon. And that's something to keep in mind when we do the rehab phase and why the rehab for walkers is very different from people who want to run or jump, for instance. Let's look at the most common causes for Achilles tendonitis. Now, Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy refers to exactly the same condition. Different people call it different things, and we've made a whole video to explain the difference there. But just know when I talk about tendonitis or tendinopathy, it means the same thing. Now, the interesting thing about Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy is that you get it in both active people and inactive people. And it's worth looking at what causes it in all of these groups to ensure that your treatment is correct. So, in active people, overload is the most common cause, whereas in inactive people, it's more likely due to other medical conditions, sometimes medications, or even things like changes in, in footwear. So we'll look at each of these in a little bit more detail. Now, overload can happen through two ways. You can get it through overuse, or you can get it through too much compression. So we're going to look at overuse first. Now, when we think of overload through overuse, the name is pretty much self-explanatory. It can happen suddenly. So for instance, you're doing a training session that's much harder than what your Achilles tendon is used to. Or for instance, even if it's not a training session, you're not used to walking much or you just walk on flat, but all of a sudden you do a very hilly walk or really long walk that you're not used to. And that then overloads the tendon. A second way is that you get a more gradual overload. And this usually happens with people who train quite hard and they don't allow enough recovery time between their training sessions. So you've got to remember, whenever we do exercise, our bodies accumulate micro damage. And that's absolutely normal. And it's actually what we want. Because if you allow it enough recovery time, then the body restores the micro damage and it rebuilds itself stronger than before. And that's how we grow bigger muscles, stronger tendons, more robust bones. But now, if you're going to train before you've actually recovered fully, you then stand a chance of accumulating micro damage because your body hasn't repaired the previous lot. And you can then um, develop overuse injuries like Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy. Common causes for overload or for overload through overuse is if we look at sudden increases in the volume of activity you do. Now, like I mentioned, this can just be how much you walk compared to what you used to. Or it can be that you actually run a lot more or do a lot more sports. So typically, if you are off for a while because you're either ill or life just got in the way with your training, and then suddenly you go back to training and you take it up where you left it four weeks ago, the change may be too sudden and your Achilles may flare up. Or it could be that you suddenly increase the intensity of your activity so much that your Achilles can't cope with it. So for instance, you're used to walking on the flat or running on the flat, and now all of a sudden you're doing lots of hilly runs or you're adding in lots of sprint sessions. Um, 
Another thing could be if you're used to walking around in shoes with a bit of a heel on it or running, and then you suddenly switch to flat shoes. We see this often after the winter period because people tend to wear shoes that has a little bit of a heel to them um, when it's cold. And then when it's summer, they switch to flat sandals or even flip-flops and walk miles and miles in them. And their Achilles is just not used to it. And because you're changing the angle it has to work through, it now has to work through a larger range where it doesn't necessarily have the strength. If you make that change quite gradually, the Achilles can adapt and there's no problem. Other issues that can happen is if you don't allow enough recovery time. So every person's body is different and how much recovery time you need after a training session will depend on your genetics, how fit you are, because the fitter we are, the better our bodies can recover, how many years you've trained for. Because if you've been consistent with your training for several years, your tissue is much stronger and more robust and can recover more quickly than somebody who's only started recently. And that's why it's important to not try and follow a training plan that is right for somebody else, but actually observe how your body is doing. Also, if you're doing high intensity training sessions or training sessions that work you really hard, they usually recover more slowly or produce more micro damage. So you need more recovery time, usually about 48 hours compared to an easy run or easy session. Usually 8 to 12, even 24 hours is enough to recover from that. So it's important to look at that at the recovery time. Overload can also happen through too much compression. If you can imagine the, this is your foot, this is your heel and your calf muscle is here, at least in and there. Can you see that as my foot bends up into dorsiflexion, we call that, the tendon naturally will compress more where it's attached to the heel bone. Now, this is normally not a problem. And similarly to when you move, your tendon adapts um, to how much compression it, it undergoes. So if the change in compression levels are gradual, it can adapt, strengthen to handle that amount of compression, and it's not an issue. But if the increase in the amount of compression you put on it is too sudden, it doesn't have enough time to adapt, and that's when it flares up. Now, typically, this is what causes insertional Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy. And Typical reasons why the compression may increase too much there is if you suddenly start doing lots and lots of deep calf or Achilles tendon stretches or hold it for really long um, in that position. Or perhaps you just switched from shoes with a bit of a heel on them, like we spoke about earlier, to shoes that's now flatter. And that increases the compression around that area. It can also be that perhaps your sport you've started doing lots of backwards running drills because that increases the dorsiflexion you do. That's typical for football training drills. It may be that you've had a break from football training and you're back into the pre-season training and this change is just too quick for you. There's also a type of foot shape. So people with really high arches um, and stiff ankle joints, they tend to be predisposed to insertional um, Achilles tendonitis um, and more compression in that area. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do anything about it. It just means that your choice of footwear may be a little bit more important. So if you find that you're getting insertional Achilles tendonitis pain and every time you go into flat shoes, it's really an issue, you may want to consider sticking to shoes with a little bit of a heel on it. Or if you're going to make that change to flatter shoes, you have to really, really slowly ease into it over several weeks or months even. What other causes are there for Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy? Now, the first is if you get hit on the tendon. So, for instance, somebody rams you with a shopping trolley by accident or something falls in your Achilles tendon. That can sometimes lead to Achilles tendonitis to develop. Also, the menopause can predispose you to developing tendonitis. Now, the menopause in itself doesn't have to be a cause of it. It is just that what happens is during the menopause, your estrogen levels in your body um, drops. Now, estrogen is in charge of your collagen production. So collagen is the building block of tendons. And if your estrogen le levels drop, you can't produce new collagen fibers as quickly. And it takes a little bit longer to repair them or make them stronger. And that's often what happens then with female runners when they enter the perimenopause or the menopause. They train as normal, never had an issue with it. But now because their bodies can't recover as quickly, they suddenly start to develop tendonitis or tendon pain and often in various parts of the bodies. 
So at that point, it's really important to understand that you do need to adjust your training habits to allow a little bit more recovery time so that your body can actually recover itself properly after each training session. Medical conditions like diabetes can play a role. If you have diabetes, especially if it's not very well controlled, the body just tends to recover a little bit more slowly after exercise and takes, needs a little bit more time. So that's important to take into consideration. Also, there are specific medications like fluoroquinolones, antibiotics, that can actually cause tendon damage um, and even so it can cause tendonitis as well as tendon rupture because it affects the collagen production and it actually actively breaks it down. Now, if you want to know more about antibiotics and how they can affect your tendons, we've made videos about those and I'll put links to that in the description of this video. I've also made videos about um, the menopause and getting hit on a tendon. So I'll put videos to all of those that you can understand that in a bit more detail. Other medications like statins may play a role. Statins are often prescribed for people with high cholesterol or older folk. Now, the problem with statins is that, again, it suppresses the production of collagen fibers and the turnover of collagen fibers and therefore may affect some people's tendon health. If you want more information about that, I've also made a video about that and I'll put a link in here. What I will also say is be careful. Don't just stop medications that you're on because there may be a very important medical reason why you should be taking it. And that medical reason may outweigh your tendon problems issues. So always speak to your doctor and find out about alternative medications or how you can safely stop them if it is an issue. Something that people often blame for Achilles tendonitis, especially insertional Achilles tendonitis, is a Haglund's deformity. Now, a Haglund's deformity is a shape of your bone that may predispose you to a bit more compression at the heel bone. But that in itself is not a cause for Achilles tendonitis. The, the research shows there are lots and lots of people with Haglund's deformity that has absolutely no issue. So for me, giving somebody a diagnosis of, oh, your pain is because you've got a Haglund's deformity is a little bit useless because um, then they would have had pain from the moment that they were born on or started walking on their feet. Now, I've made a whole video where I explain this in a lot more detail. So if you've got a diagnosis of Haglund's deformity, go watch that video because you'll understand better how you can actually treat it without having to go for surgery or anything like that. Then lastly, some um, clinicians think that there may be an influence from the nervous system that can predispose you to Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy. So, we're thinking of a subtle um, decrease in how happy your nerve is to slide. So the sciatic nerve, for instance, when we walk, it runs down the back of your leg and that has to slide with every step we give. Now, sometimes something just holds on to it higher up. It could be tight muscles. It could be a previous injury you had that causes a bit of scar tissue. Um, and then the nerve isn't as free to move. And there is some evidence that they that may actually affect the tendon health lower down. This is something that can be easily tested for, and I've explained this in a video again that I'll put a link to, but this is something that we even do a slump test for just over video call with our patients. So it's very easy to assess and add exercises in if that is seen to be needed. The main symptoms you feel when you've got Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy are pain and stiffness. Now, some people will just have pain, others just stiffness, and others may feel both. Now, it's always useful to just quickly take a look at what happens inside the tendon when you have at least tendon tendonitis or tendinopathy. When a tendon is healthy and not injured, it's made up of lots and lots of collagen fibers that's packed in parallel. Now, if you have one piece of string and you try to break it, it can break quite easily. But you'll know from school we did this experiment where you have lots of strains of string in parallel and you try to break it and then it's nearly impossible. And that's the same concept here. The fact that those collagen fibers are packed in parallel is what makes tendons so extremely strong and robust. Now, if you flare your tendon up and you irritate it, what happens is those fibers move a tiny bit away from each other and it accumulates a bit more fluid-like substance. It's not proper fluid, but it's like a gel-like substance. And you get different shapes of cells that come into that space to try and help the healing process. So... That's during the first few weeks of having Achilles tendonitis. 
if you react quickly and you allow it to calm down and you don't try to overload it further, the tendon can usually recover quite quickly. But now, if your tendon pain carries on and you perhaps ignore it and do a little bit too much, then this structure changes more. So the fibers start to move away from each other more and you can see a lot more fluid between them. And then if you neglect it over a long period of time, then you eventually lose that parallel structure. Like in this picture, you can't really see the parallel structure anymore and there's a lot more fluid that accumulates in it. Now, important things to note is that it is usually only a part of the tendon that is affected. So the rest of the tendon is still nice and strong and robust. It's only that portion that's affected. Um, and this is also why you can sometimes feel a lump in the tendon or you notice a swollen area in the tendon. It's because the structure starts to change in that area. So does Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy cause scar tissue? No. The structural changes we've just spoken about is different from scar tissue. Scar tissue um, only happens when you tear something or when you have surgery where stuff is cut, then the body forms scar tissue. Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy is different. It's a different structural change that happens, so it's not scar tissue. The intensity of the pain and stiffness can also vary quite a lot between people. And what the research shows is that there's no correlation between how much pain you feel versus um, how much damage your tendon has. So something can be, a tendon can be really, really painful, and then actually not that injured. It's just super sensitive. So that's important to understand that you don't have to worry. Just the fact that your tendon is really painful doesn't mean that it's really, really damaged. It's just super sensitive. Where you feel the pain when you have Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy correlates with the area of the tendon that's actually injured. So it has to be painful on the tendon or its insertion for it to be Achilles tendonitis. If the pain is in some other area, it may not be tendonitis. So you have three types or Achilles tendonitis can be divided into three categories depending on which part of the tendon is injured. Insertional Achilles tendonitis is exactly where the tendon inserts into the heel bone. Mid-portion Achilles tendonitis is about two to five centimeters or six centimeters above the heel bone and you can usually squeeze the tendon and feel a painful area there. Insertional you press on the heel bone and there'll be a tender spot in that area. Uh, but you can also get high Achilles tendinopathy, which is where the calf muscles fuse into the tendon. So we call that the musculotendinous junction, if I'm saying that correctly. This is not that common, but it is possible to have it in that area. Mid-portion Achilles tendinitis is the most common type that you'll find. The pain can refer up into the calf muscle or a little bit underneath the, the um, heel, but the main pain has to be on the tendon. It's also normal to feel that your calf muscles feel quite tight because when the tendon is irritated, it causes the calf muscles to tighten up. Now, why is it important to understand what part of the tendon is injured? Because the treatment's slightly different. The treatment for high as well as mid portion tendon tendonitis is broadly the same but insertional Achilles tendonitis has to be treated slightly differently, and I've made a video about that for you. If we look at how the symptoms start, it usually comes on the first time you notice it will be towards the end of a training session, or the training session may feel absolutely fine, but then several hours later you start to feel, oh, my Achilles is, is feeling painful. Also, it doesn't have to be a sports session. It can just be an activity you've done. Um, or typically the next morning, you wake up and you go, oh, I can't walk my on my foot, my tendon is so stiff and sore now. If you feel a sudden sharp pain while you're doing an activity and that's how your Achilles injury started, you need to get it checked immediately by a doctor or, or a physiotherapist because it may be that you've actually torn your Achilles tendon. Achilles tendonitis sets in slowly over time. Um, Achilles tendon tears happen suddenly like somebody kicked you in the back of the heel or you feel a sudden sharp um, tear. Then, in most cases, first thing in the morning when you get out of bed, those first few steps are the most uncomfortable. Now, for some people, it can just feel really, really stiff. Others may have a bit of pain with that as well. And But as soon as you move, it usually starts to warm up and ease off and you feel more comfortable. It does depend on how irritated yours is. For some people, it then feels fine during the day. Others, it may continue to feel uncomfortable. Now, why does movement help it? 
it's because if you think of the fluid-like substance that accumulates between the, the injured fibers, when you lie still, your circulation decreases and that fluid accumulates more and all the chemicals that help to irritate the nerve endings and cause pain accumulates. As soon as you start moving, the pressure created from movement improves the circulation, pushes this extra fluid away, and then it feels less swollen, less painful. It is also why if you've sat still for a long period of time during the day, you may find that, oh, my Achilles is now again more uncomfortable. A good sign that your recovery is going well is when you notice less stiffness first thing in the morning or less stiffness after you've sat still for a long period of time. Achilles tendonitis usually doesn't cause pain while resting. So if you're sitting still, um, the tendon is usually happy unless you're putting direct pressure on it or you sit with it in a position that places it under stretch. Typically also during the early stages, it may hurt a little bit as you start a walk or your running session, but then it eases off. Now, if your run is quite hard or it's a long run, it may come back towards the end of that training session. Or typically, you may not feel it again, but then several hours later, it feels worse again. Now, if you continue to train on it and you keep on overworking it, you may find that actually the pain doesn't go away anymore during a session and that it stops you from training eventually. Do you get swelling with Achilles tendonitis? Now you can debate whether this is swelling or not. You get that structural change that can cause it to feel stiff, but it's not true swelling like a joint that accumulates loads of fluid. And you can get that bump in the tendon. But again, that's due to the structure that's changed more than true swelling. So you don't really get proper swelling with it. If you have insertional Achilles tendonitis, it's quite common to get a bursitis which a bursa, a bursa is a fluid-filled sac that if it gets irritated, it really swells up. So then you can see quite a lot of puffiness around the heel and your physio has to adjust your rehab to also look after the bursa for a little bit and offload that. Now, Achilles tendonitis do not cause bruising. So if you're noticing any bruising around your foot or your ankle or your um, Achilles tendon, please go and speak to a doctor immediately because it may mean that you've actually torn something. Then some people may experience tingling or burning or numbness around the tendon. Now, these symptoms usually indicate that you've irritated or injured a, a nerve as well. Now, it may mean that actually your tendon pain is not Achilles tendonitis and that it's referred pain from the lower back. So it's one of your um, nerves that comes from the back that's causing those symptoms. And it's quite common that you don't have any back pain, but have these symptoms. So your physio can make you do easy tests to just screen for that. But it's also possible that you've just irritated that little nerve, either through the activity you did that injured your tendon, or that it's the extra irritation from the tendon that's ir irritated, that's also irritating the nerve. So if that's the case, it's your physio will adapt your training plan for you or your rehab plan for your Achilles that it doesn't irritate the nerve. And typically it's things like you want to avoid stretching too much at that point because that then irritates the nerve further. But I've made a video about that as well. If you have tingling, have a look at that video. I explain there how you can distinguish between um, all of the causes and what the correct treatment is for each of them. So what's the best way to diagnose Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy? You don't actually need any special tests like scans. In most cases, taking a thorough history and getting some movement tests, um, the patient to perform some movement tests is enough. So what I'm going to do is I'll walk you through all of these. Now, it's important to understand that you can't make the diagnosis based on just one factor. You've got to combine all of these steps to reach the diagnosis. And in some cases, scans may be useful. So I'll talk about when that is as well. So let's take a look at the different steps. Step one is actually listening to the patient and taking a thorough history of how the symptoms started as well as how it reacts to different um, activities. Because we want to see whether it fits the typical symptoms we would expect from Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy. And that's why we looked at the symptoms previously. So we want to see, for instance, how did this pain develop? If you tell me that you felt a sudden sharp pain while doing sport, I'm immediately going to um, question whether you've actually torn something and send you for a scan. If you tell me that 
you didn't really do anything. You just sat still all of yesterday and suddenly woke up with pain in your Achilles this morning. I'm actually going to question whether perhaps it's an inflammatory condition like gout that's affecting your Achilles tendon and therefore send you to your doctor to get some blood tests done. But if you tell me that, uh, no, I've been on holiday and I've walked around in flip-flops and now my Achilles is painful, then that fits the um, how I would expect Achilles tendonitis to start. So that will lean or make me lean towards that diagnosis. Also, if you tell me that your tendon feels really stiff and sore first thing in the morning, but it gets easier as you move, that also fits Achilles tendonitis um, and how that reacts. If you tell me that you're getting a lot of pain when you're just sitting still and not really moving, well, that's not typical for Achilles tendonitis. That will make me think that hmm, maybe it's an uh, inflammatory condition. So you can see why it's important to understand the symptoms for Achilles tendonitis if you want to make the diagnosis correctly. Test number two is the prod test. So remember, your pain and symptoms has to be located on the Achilles tendon. So usually when somebody has mid-portion Achilles tendinopathy or tendonitis, if they squeeze the tendon, it feels more painful than the other side. Now, squeezing your Achilles tendon, even when it's not injured, can be quite sensitive. So it's always important to um, feel what the one feels compared to the other side. For insertional, it'll be painful somewhere along the insertion of the Achilles tendon. Um, but it's worth noting that not everybody feels pain. So if you only have stiffness, that stiffness has to also be located somewhere along where the tendon runs. If the pain or stiffness is in a different area or next to the tendon, it may not be tendonitis. Test number three is getting the patient to load the tendon. So if you have Achilles tendonitis or your Achilles tendon is injured, it will usually be painful if you load it with some activities. Now, depending on how sensitive your tendon is and how strong you is, you are, um, you may have to load it in different ways. So typical loading tests we do are double leg heel raises. Now, if your tendon is very sensitive, that may be all we test in the first session. But if it's not that sensitive, we may go through a battery of tests and we usually use your history that you tell us to make us decide, help us decide what could be safe for you. So Double leg heel raises, single leg heel raises, single leg heel raises over steps sometimes or with extra weight. Sometimes it's hopping tests we have to do. It can also be that actually none of the tests we do in clinic is enough to irritate your tendon because it's not that injured. And it's only when you run a certain distance that it starts to be painful. But we're looking for some evidence that your tendon hurts with load to it. If it doesn't hurt when you load it and it's with rest, again, we start to think that perhaps there's something else causing your tendon pain rather than a tendon tendonitis. So the take home message here is that the test you do has to be specific to the person. But something else to notice is that often the pain or the tendon may not be sensitive while you're testing it, but tendons typically have a delayed response to exercise or load. So it may be that I put you through your whole battery of tests and it feels fine, even all the hops were fine. But then several hours later or the next morning, your tendon feels a lot worse. It's really important that you tell your physio about that because they need to understand then that there's a delayed pain response. So that's a positive sign that it could be tendonitis or likely tendonitis. And they have to adapt your rehab according to that because the plan they gave you when they thought you didn't have any pain may now be a little bit too much for you. So don't just curse your physio in, in their absence. Actually tell them so that they can adapt your plan for you. Then the fourth step for diagnosing Achilles tendonitis are scans or is scans. And we leave scans for last because what the research shows is that you don't need a scan to diagnose it. You can fully diagnose Achilles tendonitis really accurately through doing the first three steps we've just said. And scans cost money and they can't always be accessed quite quickly. But scans are useful if you're doing all the right things and you're not progressing. So it's useful to then just check, is anything else going on? Also, if during your assessment, I am starting to question whether you may have actually torn it or there may be something else going on, it's worth having a scan to rule out or rule in tendonitis or any other um, things that may be going on. Now, it's worth noting that I often get people email in or ask on YouTube, 
I've had an x-ray. The doctor says there's nothing wrong with my tendon and I can go on. And you go, well, x-rays don't show tendons. They only show bones. So an x-ray is not an effective scan to diagnose Achilles tendonitis or Achilles tendon tears even. The best tests are, or scans are ultrasound scans or MRI scans. Um, so those two can show you tendon injuries. X-rays can't. Excellent. Hope you found that useful. Now, I'm putting links to all the videos I mentioned in the description of this video. I've also made detailed videos about the treatment options for Achilles tendonitis, as well as the rehab exercises and how to progress it. So have a look at the description. And if you wanted more help with your rehab or you just wanted a second opinion, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. The link to the website is also in the description of this video. Take care.